Welcome back to Pregame.tv. I'm your host, Marco D'Angelo. Joined in studio, my partner in crime, you know him, Ken Thompson, Sports X Radio. We got a newcomer here after negotiations. I'll tell you what, we got him from the Tuesday crew. I really had to get, I mean, those guys were playing, you know, hardball before we could get you uh, in a trade. It ended up to get Brian Leonard, in case you guys don't rec recognize my man from the Tuesday crew. I know it's hard for him to get a word in edgewise on Tuesday, but uh, we'll let him talk on Wednesday, no problem. But Brian, I had to give up. VR demanded to release you. We had to give a month's worth of hair gel. Do you know how much hair gel this guy goes through in a month? How much that cost was just to get you? But that still doesn't come close to what I had to give Fezzik to get you off the Tuesday crew. All I know is I'm missing stuff I'm out of my paycheck, has. too, man. I, no <laughs> I mean, RJ already takes everything else. <laughs> but Fezzik, you know how modest he is, you know? And he uh, he's tired of every time. talking about Fezzik. Yeah, no, well, seriously, I mean, he's tired every time he meets somebody having to tell them a certain thing. So he required me. I had to get a 30-day supply of shirts that say, did you know I'm the only two-time winner of the Hilton contest? So he didn't have to tell people every time he met them. He could just wear the shirt. Oh, we got him a hat made. <laughs> got 2008, 2009 on. Yeah, it's good. His good. wife made him a trophy. There you go. Actually, a nice little trophy. There you go. But uh, good to have you aboard on Wednesday. The official A crew. Uh, we've had a debate right. about this. Uh, There's this, no debate. Yeah, you know. They, it's a rumor. Tuesday's the, the opening crew. act. Go to a comedy club. Go to a concert. The headliner doesn't come out first. No doubt. That's all I'm saying. Actually, you know what I got to say? If you go to a comedy club, they're usually dark on Tuesdays. So there you go right there. <laughs> hey, good point. All right. Welcome aboard. We're going to break down Friday night action. Central Florida, Louisville. Ken, this is going to be your game. But, you know, I got to tell you, Louisville, all the hype with, you know, Teddy Bridgewater, you know, Heisman Trophy and everything. Team's undefeated. You know, the lackluster win some people thought last week you know they win a game and you know they're, they're dropping in popularity because they're not blowing people out but I'll tell you what's lost about this Louisville team to me and it's something that I've wrote on because I actually last week I had the under in their game this defense has played tremendous for Louisville this year and no you know and everybody talks Louisville you don't talk about defense you talk about the offense and Teddy Bridgewater well you can you you have to talk about the offense because the defense has yet to go against a prolific offense I think they'll get tested by Central Florida Florida, but Central Florida is still not one of those wide open offenses. We saw him struggle in the second half against Kentucky, won that game, pushed that line, struggled with Rutgers at time. Rutgers was their own worst enemy in the second half, Brian. Yeah, you're right. Uh, 13 points is the most points that Louisville's given up all year, but you take a look at a listing of all the offenses they play, they really haven't played anybody. And, and Central Florida is a team that doesn't have that great of offense. You know, Central Florida, last week, I didn't give them to my clients because the line went down, but I bet, you know, I bet Memphis. Right. Because we knew there would be a letdown. You're playing a team that you've crushed the last couple of years, and you're coming off of that heartbreaker. It, it, it's, you know, South Carolina. They were winning at halftime, and they lose that game outright. Now I think they'll be back, and I, I expect a pretty good effort out of them this week. Yeah, Louisville gets a second chance on primetime TV, and a lot of people, one of the misconceptions that I think people do, and they build it into the line with some of these games, and I don't know which way you're actually going on this one, Ken, but when you got a team like Louisville that's, you know, in the spotlight, and then you hear the talking heads on all of the national shows, well, Louisville doesn't get many opportunities on national TV. They got they need style points. I'm tired of hearing about style points because you know, it's good for us as advantage players sometimes because we're looking to find the best numbers. And when you get these primetime games and you got people talking about, well, they need to run the score up because they're not on TV that often. And Teddy Bridgewater, they're going to try to pad his stats for the Heisman and this and that. It inflates the line. I don't know how you guys feel about that. Oh, definitely. Yeah. If you're looking to play one of these type of teams on national TV, it's one of the, like, like I always talk about when you're playing opening lines, Baylor comes out, when Oregon comes out. Even if you don't like those teams, you've got to bet them right there because you're never going to get those numbers by the end of the week. That's Absolutely. True. Well, you know what, Ken? We've, you've sat there patiently as we've been talking about your game. So it is your game. Let's make it official. All right, pal. And I know you thought, or at least Marco thought, that I wore this uh, 
get up over here because this Pittsburgh Steelers won a game. But if you look closely, these are UCF colors, baby. That's right, this Central Florida team. Hey, O'Leary, one heck of a coach. Sure, he may have lied on the resume a little bit back in the Notre Dame days, but if you look how consistent he's been over there in Orlando, long time he's been there. Nice tenure over there for the Knights of UCF. And this is a solid squad, a very physical team. And to me, that's where Louisville will struggle in this game is in the trenches. Blake Bortles is an adequate quarterback. He's a junior. He's solid. Storm Johnson, a good running back out of the backfield, uh, 455 yards, seven touchdowns, a guy that can go out and catch the passes as well. You have some fine receivers, Perriman, Hall, Wharton. And remember, Godfrey, the quarterback from a couple years ago, he's still part of that receiving core as well. So a lot of playmakers for UCF, they can get it done. Brian talked about the flat spot against Memphis. Hey, that Memphis defense, very, very good. If they had any type of offense, they'd have a winning record, no doubt. But I look at Central Florida. They've been circling this game all year. They lost the game to South Carolina. They played 19 minutes of bad football this year, and it was in that stretch from the third quarter to the fourth quarter right there where they gave up 28 unanswered to South Carolina and lost that 10-0 halftime lead. They came back, stormed back, lost it 28-25, so they got a cover, but they did not win the game, and that's the game that they really wanted was to knock off an SEC school. So next up, 1A, knock off the team that everybody said had to run the table to get to the BCS title game or at least a major BCS game, and that, of course, is Louisville. And Louisville will put up the points. There's no doubt Bridgewater is good, but how good is he? Rutgers showed that he can be ruffled, and he was ruffled, and that game was at home. They're at home again. I think uh, UCF's going to take care of business. Maybe not win the game, but when you're getting double digits, and I was able to get a 13. I know there's 12 and a half all over town. Still a 13 somewhere around town here in Vegas, and I know offshore you'll probably find 12 and a half, 13. But I think this line may go down a little bit because of the effort against Rutgers. I think the public remembers that they did have trouble moving that ball, and they got the oh, by the way, touchdown with two minutes to go to open that 17-10 game to a 24-10 final. So I'm looking for Central Florida. Again, a couple of good playmakers. Plummer, one of the better linebackers in Conference USA, gathers a very good, strong safety. Uh, two of the three leading tacklers from last year that are back to help O'Leary's boys. Again, Bridgewater, he's solid. Louisville's defense is good. The running backs in Norris Perry having a nice year. The transfer, Michael Dyer, he also having a good round, uh, year as well as Brown. So they've got a stable of running backs. I think it'll be somewhere in the neighborhood of 27-20, one way or the other in this game. Would not surprise me if Central Florida wins the game outright. That's my pick on pregame.tv. Take Central Florida, take the double digits. I think they have a chance to win, Marco, but I feel real strong that they will cover the game on a Friday night showcase game. We talk about it being a showcase game for Louisville. Hey, Central Florida, only the one blemish to uh, South Carolina. They think they can win the Conference USA and get into a pretty good bowl game themselves. Yeah, and they had the luxury of being off last week, so they had two weeks to prepare, right. which is definitely an added advantage advantage for them as well. Hey, great stuff from Ken as always and like the tie even though you're not officially calling it a Steeler tie. Because you've got I, the official I've Steelers got the tie. official Steeler tie. I have not been able to bring it out all season. <laughs> You know, I, I, I've got pride. I will not bring it out until at least they had one win, and thank God they played the Jets and Geno Smith, and I got my win. And maybe I won't be able to wear it the rest of the season. We'll see, but I got to wear it once. So there you go. All right, Ken says take Central Florida on Friday night. We're going to be right back. We're going to take a look at a college game on Saturday. We're going to Texas Tech at West Virginia. That's up next, pregame.tv.